The Adventures of Jungle Jim. A complete radio episode based on the action pictures and characters of the same name that appear every Sunday in the Comic Weekly. On an enemy-held island in the Pacific, Jungle Jim and his guerrilla raiders rescued the glamorous movie star Jane Lauren. They were ordered to accompany Miss Lauren back to this country. In Hollywood, they were disturbed to learn that a motion picture based on their exploit has been planned, with Jim and his men reenacting events on the island. However, Jane Lauren has disappeared, and Mr. Lawson of the FBI soon confirmed that her disappearance was planned and carried out by a dangerous group of kidnappers. Returning to Mr. Lawson's office after tracing a clue, Jim and the G-men are mystified by the abrupt departure of Sergeant McGovern. They had left Mac in charge of the office, and his unexpected absence has Jim and Mr. Lawson more worried than they care to admit. If the phone call from that woman was on the level, Lawson, why'd she hang up on you? Probably figured we'd try to chase the call, Jim, as we did. Mac wouldn't rush off this way without leaving some sort of message. Well, a logical place is by the phone there. Find anything? Not so far. Now, you know McGovern, and I don't. Is he the type to lose his head and rush off in all directions for no reason? Oh, not normally, Lawson, no, but you must remember two things about Mac. What two things? Well, he feels responsible for Jane's disappearance. He was over in the Hollywood canteen with her and let her go off with a stranger. Well, from what he said, Jane didn't give him any choice. Why would he feel responsible? Well, that leads me to the second thing. Mac won't admit it, even to himself. But he's in love with Jane. He's in... This thing is even more complicated than I thought. Well, just the same, it isn't like Mac... Hey, wait a minute. Find something? I'm not sure. Uh, help me move your desk away from the wall. Sure thing. Let me grab this in. Ready? Right. Heave. <clears throat> what is it, Jim? And this piece of paper. It must have blown off the desk. Oh, it's from Mac, all right. Well, give. It says, young kid named Ginger says she knows where Jane is. Probably no dice, but I'm going to Elm and Oak to check. Back by two, and that's all. Back by two? It's nearly three now. Where's Elm and Oak, Lawson? Out near the outskirts. Northwood Precinct. They might have relayed the call. Hello, operator. Get me Northwood 1000. Right. Uh, see if they know who this ginger is. I will, but the chances are... Hello? Northwood Precinct? Lawson speaking, FBI. Did you relay a call to this office about Jane Lawrence, something about a youngster named Ginger knowing where she was? Eh? Huh? No, not McCullen, McGovern. That's right. Well, did you get the kid's last name? I see. No, I don't blame you. Right. No luck, huh? Yeah, the desk sergeant said it sounded just like another crank call, but McGovern took the message all right. Oh, then our only chance is to go to Elm and Oak and start from scratch. Right. We'll look up some of Ginger's playmates and find out who she is. But it's going to take time. Yes, and after the phone call from that woman, time is what we're fresh out of. That's what I'm afraid of, Jim. Mac walked right into a trap. <laughs> Hurrying out to the federal agent's car, Jim realizes that the odds against them are enormous. We'll see what lies ahead in just a moment. Right now, here's a reminder on how to brighten up your week. There are times with every one of us when our workaday worries and cares seem to settle over us like a big black cloud. Well, when that happens, just remember the Comic Weekly. The Comic Weekly is your passport into a world free from those worries and cares. A world of action, thrills, mystery, and suspense. This famous comic magazine contains over two dozen brilliant and exclusive features in full color. Features that make it America's favorite funnies. Fifteen leading Sunday papers distribute the comic weekly all over the country. It's read by 15 million folks like you. So every Sunday, let the comic weekly start your week off right. Just look for the figure of Puck and the name, the Comic Weekly, at the top of the front page. Now to what looks like a deserted house on the outskirts of Hollywood and Jungle Jim. Pipe down, Ginger. Take a tip from Miss Lauren there and lie quiet. You can't bother nobody with that gag in your mouth. Uh, you didn't have to do that to the kid. She was only crying because she was scared. Yeah? Now, what's she got to be scared of, I wonder? Listen, Hill. I'll make a deal with you. Are you kidding? You ain't exactly in a position to make a deal, are you? 
You ain't in a position to do much of anything. Trust up like a Thanksgiving turkey to Okay, me. okay. But it won't cost you anything to listen. All right, sucker, I'm listening. Now, look, I know you're only carrying out orders. And after five years in the Army, I know what orders are. What do you want I should do? Whistle the stars and stripes forever? No. Just want you to leave the kid alone. I know you've got other plans for Jane and me, the way you keep looking at your watch. But Ginger can't do you any harm. She can talk, can't she? Not with that gag in her mouth. That gag won't last forever. She can't do any talking till you've got Jane and me uh, wherever it is you figure on taking us. No soap, soldier. That ain't my idea of a deal. I'm offering to take off this uniform... That way, if they do catch up with you, you won't have the army on your back. Who said they was going to catch up with me? Well, if they don't, you haven't any anything to lose. Eh, you they... talk too much with your mouth. Well, uh, what are you... What are you looking over that gun for? What do you think? Not the kid, too. Don't worry. You won't be around to see what happens to the kid. <sighs> Can I, uh... Can I have a glass of water? <laughs> Why? You won't feel thirsty in a minute. What about Jane? That's up to number one. All I know is to take her out of here at five o'clock, unless I hear different. Take her out of here? Yeah. Alone. Oh. So it's like that, huh? What time is it now? About two minutes to go. Well, uh... Can I uh, say something to Jane? Make all the pretty speeches you like, soldier. Jane, you, you know I'm no good when it comes to words. But I want you to know... Hey, that... what's the cover, Hill? Hey, Jim, look out for him. He's all set to... You... You'll never... Why, you no good... All right, Jim, he's done for. Take it easy, Miss Lauren. We'll have you and Ginger untied in a second. Mac. Hey, Mac. Mac, listen to me. Jimmy. Jimmy killed Mac, didn't he? Is he badly hurt? Right. Lawson, get an ambulance. Yeah. I'll take care of Ginger here. He tried to warn me, and I wouldn't listen. He came here to help me, and they killed him. Oh, Jim, it's all my fault. If it hadn't been for me, Mac would have been all right. I'll never forgive myself for this. Calling Dr. Kane. Calling Dr. Kane. Report to surgery, please. Dr. Kane wanted in surgery. Hello, Lawson. You still here? Yeah, I waited to thank you for your cooperation, Jim. We got the gang. All of them. Well, that's swell. But it uh, doesn't surprise me any. Uh, did Jane leave? No, she's practically lived here for the last three days. She just went down to the coffee shop for a sandwich. Any change in Mac? Well, the doctor says he can't get up for another month or so. And even when he does, he'll have a kind of a limp. And that won't stop Mac. He's got what it takes. You can say that again. Say, I understand that movie deal you were worried about is all off now. Yes, Lawson. They're getting professional actors to play our parts. It'll be better that way. Yeah. What about you and the Raiders? No, no, Lawson. There's something in the wind, but they haven't told us just what it is yet. Oh, Mr. Lawson, the doctor says... Well, hello, Jim. Hello, Jim. Gee, I'm glad you're here. The doctor says we can see Mac now. Well, you're the ones he wants to see. I just want to give him this personal letter from the chief. Thought he'd like to have it. Sure he would. You go ahead, Lawson. I won't be long. Give me a ring at the office, Jim. I'll do that. We'll have lunch together. Well, Jim? Well, Jane? Have you told Mac what you told me? The way you feel about him? Yes. I still think he's too good for me, though. <laughs> as long as you feel that way, you'll both be all right. Oh, uh, did you hear they're getting actors for our parts in the movie? Yes, uh, I heard, Jim. I think I see you're a fine Italian hand in that, and I want to thank you. It's just the way we wanted it. What's the use of having influence if you don't use it? What What goes with you and the Raiders? Uh, nothing definite. We're moving inland to a new camp, but I don't know what the deal is. So it's hail and farewell, hmm? Only for now, Jane. We'll see a lot of each other when we get this war won. What about Mac? Have you told him? No, I, uh, I came down here to do that. I don't know just how to break it to him. Come on. Maybe I can help you. 
His room's just across the corridor here. Can we come in? I've got some more company for you. Hi, fella. Oh, Jim. Boy, I'm almost as glad to see you now as I was when you came through that window. You <laughs> see, dear, remember the doctor said you weren't to excite yourself. Uh, you see, Jim, she's already bossing me around. Yeah, from the looks of you, Mac, it's the best medicine in the world. Oh, I'll be out of here in no time. Say, uh, how's Ginger? She's swell, Mac. Uh, Jane took her a lot of dolls and stuff. Oh, she's as happy as a lark. Well, that's fine. That's fine. You, uh, got something else on your mind, haven't you, Jim? Oh, I, um, I wouldn't put it that way exactly. New orders came through for the Raiders, huh? Uh, yes, but nothing definite. Uh, we sort of held a council of war this morning. Colo, Singley, and Frenchy and all of us. We thought we'd try to pull some wires and hold off and... Hold off until you can rejoin us. Sure, it, it wouldn't be the Raiders without you, Mac. I don't know how I'm going to be myself without them, Jane. C.O. gave me a hint of where you're going, Jim. Far east again, huh? As far as we know, yes. But it will take time to train new men and... Oh, we... don't make it hard for yourself, Jim. I know how it is with me. Well, you'll be all right, Mac. Why, the Raiders are counting on I you. I know, I know. But this leg of mine makes me strictly an armchair raider from here on. Just remember that in spirit I'll always be with you. You're... You're quite a guy, Mac. No one will ever take your place with us. Likewise, Jim. And don't worry. I'll keep you posted on whatever happens. Yeah. Do that. I I'll want to know. I'm not sure when we leave for that special camp, but... I'll bring the gang down before we go. So long now. So long, Jim. Chung Ho. Chung Ho, and see that you take good care of Jane, Mac. Mac, I, I was never so proud of anyone in my life. I know what the Raiders mean to you. Yeah, I, I think you do. Well, you've seen them in action. And I know I'll never be able to take their place. But I'll try to, Mac. I'll never leave you. You couldn't get rid of me now, even if you wanted to. I'm a lucky guy, Jane. But for the next few days, I want you to see as much of Jim, Jim and the gang, as, as you can. Trying to get rid of me already, are you? No. No, I'm serious. <laughs> You've got a whole lifetime to spend with me. But, Jane... Uh, from a couple of hints the CO gave me, well, uh, see as much of the Raiders as you can while they're still here. Well, of course, darling, if you say so, but you sound as if they were never coming back. Honey, I hate to say it, but if my hunch about their new assignment is right, I'm not sure they ever will come back. 